Now, there really isn't anything radically wrong with being sick or with dying. Who said you're supposed to survive? Who gave you the idea that it's a gas to go on and on and on? <laughs> and we can't say that it's a good thing for everything to go on living from the very simple demonstration that if we enable everybody to go on living, we overcrowd ourselves. That we're like an unpruned tree. And so, therefore, uh, one person who dies, in a way, is honorable because he's making room for others. And the panic that all life everywhere must be saved, although each one of us individually will naturally appreciate it when anybody saves our life, if we apply that case, you see, all around, we can see that it's not workable. We can also look further into it and see that if our death could be indefinitely postponed, we would not actually go on postponing it indefinitely. Because after a certain point, we would realize that that isn't the way in which we wanted to survive. Why else would we have children? Because children arrange for us to survive in another way. By, as it were, passing on a torch so that you don't have to carry it all the time there comes a point where you can give it up and say, now you work. It's a far more amusing arrangement for nature to continue the process of life through different individuals than it is always with the same individual. Because as each new individual approaches life, life is renewed. And one remembers how fascinating the most ordinary everyday things are to a child because they see them all as marvelous because they see them all in a way that is not related to survival and profit. And when we get to thinking of everything in terms of survival and profit value, as we do, then the shapes of scratches on the floor cease to have magic. And most things, in fact, cease to have magic. So therefore, in the course of nature, once we have ceased to see magic in the world anymore, we are no longer fulfilling nature's game of being aware of itself. There's no point in it anymore. And so we die. And so something else comes to birth, which gets an entirely new view. And so nature's self-awareness is a game worth the candle. It is not, therefore, natural for us to wish to prolong life indefinitely. But we live in a culture where it has been rubbed into us in every conceivable way that to die is a terrible thing. And that is a tremendous disease from which our culture in particular suffers. And we notice it firstly in the way in which death is swept under the carpet. This is one of the major problems in hospital work. When a family conspires with the doctor to keep from grandmother the knowledge that she is dying. Grandmother suspects that she is dying but probably doesn't really want to know for sure. And her family talk with her in such a way as to say, well, it'll be, you, you, you'll probably be getting all right in a few weeks. And won't it be nice to be able to do this, that, and the other, uh, because they have this funny feeling that 
it's important to build up courage and hope. And so they become liars and a mutual mistrust develops. Uh, because once you are playing the game on that level, you tend to play the mistrust on other levels. And so the person is left to die alone, suddenly, unprepared, and doped up to the point where death hardly happens and there is no derivation from it of the peculiar spiritual experience that can come with death. 